Welcome back. I'm Thrice the Artist, and this is part three of my Let's Play Control Ultimate Edition. I turned up the brightness a little bit because I realized I couldn't see anything in some of the areas. And I think this will help. The default setting was just way too low on brightness. All right, let's continue to the communications department. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mail. See if there's anything in here to pick up. Looks like there's a crate over here. That voice likes to ramble. I'm not really paying attention to what it's saying. a mod better than what I currently have all right it's 26% health recovered again I'll save the documents till the end of this video I think that's what I'm gonna do from now on so I don't stop the flow of the game every time I want to read something I need to find a clearance card. Maybe there's a key nearby. Oh, maybe it's on this dead guy. This must have opened the door. Oh gosh. He just jumped. Oh, control point. That one didn't change too much. I guess this is more just a uh, Probably more of a checkpoint than anything. Anything in here? I don't know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to go through that door down there. But I can't help but explore everywhere. First. Let's see what I can find. This guy has a clearance as well. I don't know if I should just go ahead and go through there, or... I think... Ooh! Come on. 
that was something special. It said private first class or something. Oh, okay. Body just disappears. Looks like there's just some random stuff to pick up in here, but it's quite a bit. Out of reach. I'll probably leave it all except for let's see what mods I have. Launch energy cost. And weapon mods. Damage while low on health. I still think I'm going to keep mine. Okay. Instead of going that way, I'm going to go down back to that door that I passed up. See what's in here. Oh. It's okay, I got telekinesis. Saw myself get killed there. That was dumb. I need to pay more attention to my health. I didn't realize how quickly I lose health. The hotline should be past my room. Okay, so maybe I am supposed to go this way, so maybe I want to go back and see what the door was upstairs. Line chamber. Tea time. I'm gonna go back real quick. See what was through that door upstairs. I uh, nope, went too far back. I go in here? Oh, it's locked. Yeah, let's see what's through here real quick. Some documents. The room at the end back there looks kind of messed up. What's going on in here? Okay, I can't go in there. Okay, I must need some power-up or something I don't have yet. Alright, back to our original quest. <clears throat> so let's go towards the Hotline Center. Hard to keep track of where I've been and haven't been when it kind of looks the same. I guess that's the downfall of a office building. I 
guess I'll just keep working my way through. Tomasi is who I just fought. This way. I can hear it. Undefined reading. <clears throat> Hotline chamber. Making progress. Let me try the one door. Hello? Anyone here? Doesn't look like it. Keys? Nope. No keys. Can't go in there. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Oh. Okay. So hitting that opens random doors. So let's go back to this door, because I believe it had a pyramid on it. Sure did. There's me. Pick up the hotline. Directors can call the board. Okay, so what does it do? Oh, 
Hotline will allow you to contact extra dimensional entities. Okay. So how do I do that? Oh. I thought it was going to let me uh, do something with that. Not just have it chase me. Or do I let it come at me? No, it kills me. Okay, so then what do I do? Okay, lets me contact extra-dimensional entities. Or extraterrestrial or something. seem to hurt it. So do I just have to outrun it? Kind of thought it would let me do something different. Maybe I just gotta survive for a minute. See what happens. What did I do? It is a fault. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and then the board. And my hypothesis is, under the right conditions, to other planes of existence as well. So it's just communication. A director needs a team. My management team. These people know the secrets of the Bureau as well as I do. Something better. Darling, Tomasi, Salvador, Marshall. Marshall especially, my head of operations. She sees right through me. She knows I don't like relying on people. The only person you should fail is yourself. But the things change when you become a director. So I'm not sure how I became director. I just happened to find you dead. And now everybody is calling me director. And her nose is bleeding. I have it. The hotline. I can, I can reach, reach Trench. Trench. Well, well, listen, listen to him. He feels, he feels more, more like, like, like Echo. Echo. An echo, an echo with an important info. Well, that's what Pope called him. He called him a ghost. Pope called him an echo. People react strongly when they tell them about you. Me? Is it too soon to tell them? She might be able to help. Well, that was quick. back into the director's office. So we're heading to the boardroom. Uh -huh. 
Level four. I know there are a few level ones now. That I could probably get in. But I'm not gonna run around trying to find them. Boardroom was this way. Jesse, did you get the hotline? I mean, how is it out there? The cause of the hiss? Sorry, sorry. You may have made Calm down. I got the hotline. I can make out what you're just saying. Incredible. What did he say? He talked about his management team. People who knew him for their secrets. Your boss, darling. Yeah. Just as you look with, with no prep, no training in this extreme. I'm doing better than you, Pope. Phenomenally well. Oh, wow. His kids seem to affect you. I mean, I would love to run some tests on you. If you agree with that. I don't think it's the time for that. We could find out something that would help us. Tests. I don't know. She might find out about you. But, but I, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind really understanding, understanding more myself. myself. Okay. okay. If you think it will help. I really wish this game gave me a little bit of a choice in how things play out. We need to get these sectors open to locate Darling and Marshall. And I'll offer a way inside the main main sector. The sooner we find one, the sooner we reach the silver way. Gender's in charge of everything, isn't he? Solved it. No, I do wonder what part he has to play in it all. They focus on him way too much. He even had his own painting. this place unknown color directorial override upgrade and unlock new abilities from the nearest control point ooh board countermeasures are now available from the nearest control point Weapon forms and mods can now be crafted at the nearest control point. Well, that's cool. Hi, Jason. Oh. It looked like there was something I could ask her. Just let me know. Initial impressions. Let's go look at upgrading.
singing. Abilities. 10% to health. Okay, looks like I can unlock milestone rewards. Okay. So the milestone rewards, I wonder if it's just after I use a certain amount, those open up additional weapon form slot, additional personal mod slot, additional personal mod slot. And then the abilities. 10% to health, 10% to energy, 10% to melee damage, 25% to launch damage. I might just unlock one of each of those. I definitely want the health. Okay, then it goes up to three. Let's do launch damage. I don't think I need melee. We can do energy. Okay, and then that does do the milestone. Okay. I have one more left, but I'm going to save it to use. It's an astral construct. Construct shatter. Shatter has high stopping power with a scatter shot that devastates grouped enemies at close, close range. Okay, so I can make new guns. I can make mods. And I can upgrade. Let's try making shatter. board countermeasure. Executive incursion. Kill his rangers in the executive sector using shatter. You may enjoy execute smile this measure. Smile not guaranteed. Kill his demolition. Experts change maneuvers. Oh, so are these... like... side quests? So if I fast travel, okay, okay. Increases the projectiles fired. Personal mods. Synergy. Don't care about that until I have more. Alright, let's see what collectibles we have. Hiss elevated. Hiss elevated agents display abilities similar to telekinetic com competencies observed in Bureau. Para utilitarians. Para utilitarians. Utilitarians. <laughs> Utilitarians. Some prefer to change their targets while others launch objects at them. Telekinetic attacks have been ineffective against the Hiss Elevated due to their own talent in the area. They do not use any weaponry except their own paranatural capabilities. Some Hiss Elevated have been seen levitating while strapped into chairs. This is likely the result of individuals being corrupted while undergoing cognitive recording and parapsychology. How are they able to use paranatural abilities? It is possible that these individuals were bound to objects of power prior to corruption. It's also worth considering that the Hiss resonance can identify and express latent paranatural ability in the inv individuals it corrupts. Read the file redacted for full report. Initial impressions. Initial encounters with the entity known as the Hiss have revealed various behavioral facts. Not most notably, the Hiss is able to invade or corrupt control points, altered items, and even humans radically changing their behavior. Curiously, any person wearing one of the wearable HRA devices that Dr. Darling has been distributing over the past few weeks 
was not affected by this corruption. The only known exception to this fact is the new director, Jesse Faden, who possesses an inherent immunity to the Hiss. This could indicate that she has already been corrupted, but her behavior is so in contrast to that of the other Hiss that I've dismissed that theory. My final observation comes from Mrs. Faden herself. She is able to cleanse material and organisms of the Hiss corruption. We tested this ability on a Hiss corrupted entity, but unfortunately the process seems to kill the host. Perhaps the host's physiology becomes reliant on the Hiss. More work to be done. Data breach. Last month, an, our on-site server experienced an intrusion by unauthorized users. After a thorough investigation, it was confirmed that the users only accessed a video file which contained portions of various Dr. Darling presentations. Investigators were able to track the users through their IP addresses. The following are the confirmed identities of these users. Patrick Rubens, Ardo, Christopher, Jacko, Jacko. These individuals are in breach of Bureau Code 91 and have been placed under surveillance by our internal investigation team. Further action is pending. Hotline security log. All visitors must check in. Trench, trench, custodian. Trench, trench, custodian. Same thing over and over, except there's a different custodian at the end. Tomasi's ID. Well done, everyone. It was a strong campaign and perfectly executed. Case files hotline. Containment procedure. Object should be inaccessible for use except for the director. Object is 1960s area era. Red Bakelite telephone. The rotary dial has been replaced with a black knob of unknown purpose. The phone weighs. The object allows the director to communicate with the... If used by anyone other than the director, the object will cause lethal. See Dr. Darling presentation 11.6 for more information. The object is currently bound to director trench. Not anymore. The object spontaneously manifested in the director's office placed on the desk. Dr. Northmore was the first known bureau agent to use it. A battery of tests were run on an object, including blah and blah, but its origin remains unknown. A spat of disappearances were traced to the home city of Butte, where bureau agents discovered a translocative light switch cord. Bureau agents arrived at the home of a local celebrity located at blank blank, which had been connected to a total of blank disappearances in the area. Agents found no one inside. While searching a closet, the agent pulled a light cord switch and disappeared from view. Another agent was selected to pull a cord in order to replicate the event. He disappeared as well. Both agents were discovered at the oldest house. Days later, found in a sealed room by rangers exploring a new area of the house. The light switch cord in the dude's home closet disappeared during this incident. Pay attention, Alberto. This is the last time I'm explaining this. Internal lockdowns are manually triggered events that lock one or all sectors by restricting use of the sector elevator, effectively locking staff in their sector until the emergency is handled. They can only be lifted via the directorial override and maintenance once the director is satisfied that the situation is under control. External lockdowns are a bigger deal, nothing in or out of the whole building. It's only triggered by a code red contaminant breach based on some complicated system that security and research slap together. It can only be lifted once A, the threat has been neutralized, and B, a high clearance individual gives the system all clear. This process is not the same as a directorial override, so stop saying so in documentation. I know it's confusing as hell. I've told Darling a hundred times to change it, but they're adamant it stays this way. Honestly, I don't know. I don't think that they'll ever want to change it at this point. Let's just make sure our staff understands how all this mess works, okay? Reinformation campaign summary of Willow Avenue. National news sites have begun publishing the story of the polar bear attack in Alaskan town. You all know I don't like to boast, but claiming that the family is killed by migrating polar bears desperate for food because their ecosystem is being ruined by global warming was a stroke of genius. Using current ecological concerns makes the public less likely to... Blake. So another AWE behind us and the public is none the wiser. Well done, everyone. It's a strong campaign and perfectly executed. This doesn't mean we can stop monitoring blank and blank for any off-message opinions, but it's looking like we're in the clear to Metsy out. To all executive staffs from Trench, I know there is some concern regarding our operations exceeding the, national, the annual budget. So long as we operate within the oldest house, we are obscured from the scrutiny in many respects. If our budget demands are not exorbitant to the point of drawing attention, then they will be granted by the U.S. Treasury without question. The FBC is just another line in another spreadsheet that some lowly accountant won't even notice. Their eyes will skip over us even if we weren't there, as if we weren't there. The nature of the oldest house allows us certain freedoms in how we operate. Our being here is no accident. Regards. Sakurai Trench, Director of the Federal Bureau of Control. Hey, Malcolm, yes, tea time is 7. I'll see you at the course on Sunday morning. By the way, have you heard about this Tennyson report? Apparently there's a bunch of copies drifting around the office. Trench is looking to get his hands on any information about who wrote it. You wouldn't have heard anything about that, would have you? Would you? 
See you Sunday, Jim. Multimedia. I believe we... Interesting. All right, take this down. The situation in Cuba has been evaluated by the relevant authorities. The mysterious illness affecting the staff. That's what we heard earlier. Numerous personnel have damage, damage to the inner ear, ear but most, most are expected to make a full recovery. Of course, the event also damaged the cellular walls, but we can't blame them that Oh, yeah, we heard that already. You're listening to America Overnight, mystified the aliens for more than 21 years. Thank you for staying home with us. Ghosts. We've, We've had, had many calls over the years to tell us hauntings, voices, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, Today friend of the show, show Dr. Dr. Quincy Reagan, Reagan tells his story. story. Quincy, thanks. thanks. This, this is something, something I experienced recently. recently. While staying in the Chili Pines Motel in Lincoln for last year's Suspicion Con. Suspicion Con. The night manager in Avid Lister's program insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of the man was discovered under the bed. Inside that wooden mortar that the motel beds tend to have? And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse of Fufa alone. They only found the body when housekeepers were cleaning up the snail. Hauntings have been ordered in room 47. Oh well, yeah. I have to leave the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. No ghosts visited me. No chili spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. Stifling me off. Luckily, I was able to pull the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind of enough to find me in the other room. Oh, there are countless listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange, something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we had on the main floor. Maybe your toaster is possessed. I want to hear the call in from the possessed toaster. Alright. Are these just. A director needs a team. My man added a team. Okay, these are just something is coming. The whisper. I'll have to do all these later. I'll come back in here in a little bit. All right, I'm going to end this one right here, and we'll uh, pick it back up in part four of the Let's Play Control Ultimate Edition. Thanks for watching.